Hey, and a happy new year! Long time no see. Sorry there wasn't an update in quite a while because uh, life got in the way again. But here I'm back in the workshop and ready to continue working on Libreflip. The first order of business this year is to cut the covers that go on the suction box here. And I will do this with the CNC mill over here. But you can choose to use something else like a jigsaw or just a knife. It's fairly thin plastic. Let's go and cut these. Now, a tool change. Here we are with two cut pieces. I had quite some problems with the thing lifting up on me during the cutting as you just saw. This is why I only have one tab here and one tab over here. Apart from that it's completely loose. But I think it worked out nicely and as soon as I remove the protective foil all this fuzzy edge stuff is going away and it'll look nice. So this is what came from the CNC. And it goes on here like this. If I move the suction box up, there is a small gap between the top board and the front of the suction box. And this plastic is supposed to fit in there, as it does, but very tightly. This is supposed to have three millimeters of space and it only has about one. And I was wondering why that is. So um, come with me to the back of the machine and I'll show you something. You see a faint red line on here. And this means that I haven't made this cutout yet. And that's because the bandsaw is broken. Technically the suction box wasn't even supposed to fit past this edge. But it does just barely, which hints at a deeper cause for this error. Because this box isn't supposed to fit like that, but somehow it does. So next order of business is to make this cutout here. And then I can repair the rest and mount the front covers. Let's see if I can get this part out easily or not. That should have been all. Great, now I can mount this part on the CNC and cut it. I will use these so I can align this part properly. Good, let's cut this. Here's the part. This part now has its necessary cutout. And now we can get to the root of the problem. The reason why the suction box even fit through the opening in the top without this cutout earlier is that this part down here, let me show you, this one is actually 15 millimeters thick instead of 12. And in the CAD drawings it's 12 and in the, in the bill of materials it's 15. And that's because I pasted the wrong product number in the field, so I ordered the wrong piece of wood and then I made it with the wrong piece of wood and then it was too thick. So now I need to take off the suction box and then take out the connector plate and take off all the hardware for the connector plate. And then I can run this through the thickness planer and then put it all back together. That's the plan for this episode. Let's continue to take this apart. Yes, I got it all out. Now I can look for the pieces down here and take the rest of it out. And now I can take this off. There it is. This is, this is the back side and this is the front side. 
and I will uh, plane off from this side and reduce it by three millimeters to reach 12. Let's reattach all these parts and put all of this back together and then this issue should be solved. Let's put this together. Okay, great. Come on! Yes, great, it's in. Okay, let's put this assembly back together. And this is not much fun because I can't see anything while doing it. Or not, not very much. And it's very uncomfortable to get there. Yes, one nut is on. That makes it a lot easier now. Yes, I got it. I got it. Great. I think future versions of this machine could very well have a cutout in the back to make this easier. Okay. Let's put the suction box back in. So I put this back together and I think this works now. I think the issue is now fixed. Let's look at this. And on the other side, nice and even spacing. Now the space between the suction box and the front plate is big enough. And we can finally mount the front covers. The front covers close these holes with the purpose so the, the, that the air that we suck out through the tube here can only enter through the slit in the bottom between the sheets of glass. Let's mark where they need to go. So this part here is 50 wide and it goes 20 from the edge. So I'll make a mark at 20 and at 30. Same down here. And then we need a mark up here to align it. This precision with these parts is definitely not necessary. But this is the front of the machine and I want this version to look good. If you make one for yourself, it absolutely doesn't matter how it looks. So one goes here and one goes there. The holes need to be pre-drilled and this needs to be countersunk so the head is flush. It doesn't have to be completely flush but it definitely has to sink in further than this. Okay, drill press time. First I will drill open the holes to 6.5 millimeters and then I will sink them. Before I can screw the front covers on, I need to center punch and pre-drill. And I have a very small hammer because I don't want to bash on the suction box. Okay, pre-drilling, and I only want to drill very shallow holes. Thank you. 
Awesome, now that the front covers are attached, it's time to test them. Great, the fix worked. I am really happy about that. And with this fix and the end of this episode, I can say that the, all the known bugs and problems and issues with the mechanical design are dealt with for now, and the testing can continue. For the testing, I'm still waiting on some software and firmware, and if you like to help with that, that would be awesome. The machine is mostly written in Rust, and the mechatronical side is done with an Arduino that controls the sensors and the motors, and um, code is needed in both compartments. If you like to chip in, that would be really awesome. The You can find the code on GitHub. The link is in the description to the repository. I'm sorry that I haven't published very regular Thursday videos as I at some point promised. In the last couple of uh, weeks, uh, life got in the way and some other things that happened around this time of the year uh, happened. So Christmas, uh, where I made some uh, presents for Christmas, then Congress uh, happened. After Congress, I was sick for two weeks. I catched something uh, at the Chaos Communication Congress, but that, that happens, I guess, to everyone sometimes. And um, then most of December, I I spent with the big um, CNC mill and the little box project. And if you like to learn more about uh, the last crazy two months, um, check out my website. On my website, I have um, blog posts about all of these other projects that I'm doing. But now that all of these are done and published and documented on my blog, I can focus a lot more time on LibreFlip. I don't have that much time. I'm working full time uh, next to LibreFlip. But um, I invest most of the free time that I have in this project whenever I can, and this will certainly continue. And if you're new to the series, this is just one part of a longer series where I show all the steps how to make this page-turning open source book scanner yourself. The idea behind this project is to make it as easy as possible to be built by others. So with every decision in the design, I always prioritize the question of what tools you need to make it first and reduce that as much as I possibly could. I hope um, this will turn out to be a working page turning book scanner. And if I will succeed, you'll see in the next episode. So um, maybe subscribe and thanks for watching. See ya.